We all. Mr. O'Rourke. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'd like to begin by thanking each of you for your service. And through each of you, I'd like to thank the men and women who serve under you uh, for their service to our country. Um, I'd like to begin with General Odierno um, and, and ask you uh, the following series of questions. As I understand it today, in Iraq and Syria, the ground forces arrayed against ISIS are the Iraqi National Army, uh, the Kurdish Peshmerga, uh, Iranian-sponsored um, Shiite militias, and um, to the degree that they exist, the uh, moderate Syrian opposition forces, which uh, we are um, helping to, to train uh, and equip. Will those ground forces be sufficient to meet the President's objective of degrading, defeating, and destroying ISIS? It is yet to be understood. What I would say is, uh, depending on how well the Iraqi security forces do, Kurdish Peshmerga are performing incredibly well. The Iraqi security force was still being trained, not sure. I have great concern about Shia militias. I don't know who they work for. I'm not sure uh, uh, who they're loyal to. I'm not sure what they're trying to accomplish. So I have some concerns about their participation. Uh, we're working to train the moderate Syrian opposition. And so I think it's still time will tell. Uh, I think we've halted the movement of ISIL. I think we've had some initial uh, with the great work of the Air Force and the Navy and the Marine Corps Air. But I think we also have to wait and see how well these ground forces do, and we simply don't know yet. Is, has any other country anywhere in the world, but especially in the Middle East, pledged ground forces to this effort? There are special operations forces from other countries that are participating uh, in, in supporting and training the Iraqi security force and the Kurdish Peshmerga, as well as as we begin to train the Sunni moderates. And, and including those forces both on the ground and pledged for the future, does your assessment still stand that uh, too soon to tell whether those ground That, that is correct. Okay. And so I, I would assume that if we are going to achieve uh, the President's stated objective of uh, defeating and destroying ISIS. It is very possible that we will need additional ground forces, and it is very possible uh, that we as a Congress will have to make a decision about funding uh, and supporting our ground forces uh, in, in that country, in those two countries. And I guess my question for you and for Secretary McHugh is, does the, the budget uh, that you are proposing today, the President's budget, have sufficient resources to ensure that we are training uh, our soldiers, uh, that the readiness is at the level that is necessary, and that we can support them through uh, the following budget year to the degree that we need to, to ensure that they can prevail uh, and that we don't unnecessarily put them in harm's way due to lack of training, readiness, or equipment? If, if we had to, the, the President's budget allows us to sustain where we are at in readiness, maybe increase it a little bit. Uh, if we get into a sustained conflict, that is year, years, uh, we, are, we would need more dollars in order to develop the proper readiness for us to repeatedly redeploy our soldiers into harm's way. We do not have that level of budget today. In this budget? In this budget. Okay. I, I would fully agree. Uh, I, would, I would note, of course, there is always an option uh, to ask us to stop doing the things we are doing right now, given the missions that all the services are arrayed against. I, uh, I can't imagine what that would be. But uh, short of a very dramatic, uh, probably unpalatable decision point such as that, uh, uh, we would not be able to meet that. It, let me ask you a, a related question. Uh, Secretary James talked about uh, even more difficult choices uh, if we continue with the budget caps and the, and the sequester. Um, and, and I think that should extend to political choices, diplomatic choices, and choices that our allies make. You mentioned that in response to Russian aggression in Ukraine, we have deployed additional forces to Estonia, to Latvia, to Lithuania, to Poland. But when you look at those countries' defense budgets, what they spend as a percentage of their GDP compared to what we spend um, uh, is insufficient. Uh, what more do we need to do to force other countries to make the difficult decisions to get their taxpayers to support these missions that are arguably more in their national interest than they are in ours? Well, that's a, it's a 
big challenge in a moving target and one that uh, secretaries of defense certainly going back in my time to Secretary Gates have, have tried to press upon uh, but largely our European allies. Uh, only four of the 28 NATO nations currently meet the 2% uh, requirement. I might add Estonia is one of them. Uh, but as you noted, uh, when it comes to Russia and, and the concerns uh, that we see uh, driving out of Ukraine, uh, all of us would like to uh, work more closely with our European allies. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Conway, Chairman Conway. Well, thanks, Chairman. And uh, thanks, folks, for being here today. Um,